Hi, and welcome to another episode of Home Bars Live. I'm your host, Mo Brooks, checking in as always from the bright and sunny, beautiful San Francisco, California. This week is going to be a little bit different. This week, we actually have an amazing world-renowned bartender and an amazing world-renowned whiskey maker, um, spirits maker as well. Uh, so it's, it's one of those things that we're going to kind of get both sides of the spectrum, hopefully, today and kind of see how everyone drinks while they're at home. So without further ado, I'm gonna kick the show off and I'm gonna start out with one of my favorite people in the world. If you don't know her, you need to know her and hopefully after this episode, you will go and Google and follow this young lady because she is absolutely amazing. The lovely Lauren Paler. Lauren, how are you, P? Hi, how's it going? I'm good, looking at your face, so it's definitely a win. How are things? <laughs> uh, things are great, things are great. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just grateful that I have my Miss Calvago here, <laughs> um, and I have your company, but yeah, things are pretty good. No complaints. Awesome. So as you know, the name of the show is, is Home Bars Live, and I can kind of see your bar set up behind you. So uh, why don't you give us a little tour, kind of show us your yeah. little home lab. Okay. So uh, <laughs> it's funny. So this is, um, this was my boyfriend's house before he was my boyfriend, so uh, very much a bachelor pad, and slowly but surely incorporated my own style into it. But it's funny because the very first thing I, I did was create this little home bar here. Um, so I have all my favorite cocktail books here and here from Bar Tools. And this is this has definitely increased over the years um, as I competed in a lot more competitions and um, just acquired a lot more bar swag. So if anyone needs jiggers, I have plenty to share. Um, <laughs> I have uh, some trophies and just awards and we transitioning over to here. Um, a few of the spirits uh, that I have are signed bottles and just things that um, I only open for special occasions. So yeah, it's it's definitely become a lot more extensive over the years. There's stuff on the floor you can't see, but not worth looking at right now. But um, yeah, pretty proud of my home bar. It's it's become a nice little sanctuary of mine, especially during these times with COVID. Awesome, awesome. So I see you got a little elote concoction there. Why don't you tell us what's in the glass? Yeah, so uh, so once COVID started, I actually began a little garden outside. So um, I like to put a lot of herbs in the cocktails that I make at home now. Uh, so hey, kind of like your mojito-esque cocktail here. So I took uh, two ounces of the mezcal bago, um, and then I did three-quarter ounce lime juice, fresh lime juice, three-quarter ounce uh, simple syrup, muddled some mint at the bottom of that, gave it a nice little shake, a few dashes of Angostura bitters, and then uh, just a nice mint sprig on top. Awesome, awesome, yeah. awesome. So for the people at home that, that don't know you, um, why don't you tell us about yourself? Give us a little bit of your background, some of the cool stuff that you've done, competed in. Yeah, uh, so my name is Lauren Paler, LP, whichever you prefer. Um, I'm originally from New York, uh, currently living in D.C., I uh, moved here in 2010 for college. Uh, I was a nursing um, student and uh, practiced nursing for a few years prior to making my way into the food and beverage industry. Um, I kind of stumbled upon food and beverage by accident, but I think that is the case for most of us. I, um, I patronized a bar called The Passenger in DC often. Um, prior to being 21, went there to eat my chicken sandwich and my drink my Mexican Coca Cola and get my homework done. <laughs> and um, <laughs> after turning 21, realized uh, that I could potentially see myself standing behind a bar and, um, and bartending. I, I, I became very, very intrigued by the bartenders. You know, I think most people are like entranced by chefs in the kitchen. And for me, for some reason, just watching a bartender shake a cocktail or stir a cocktail and, you know, invest time into personalizing experience um, made me feel like, you know, that's something I want to do. Um, so abruptly quit my nursing job. My mom was not thrilled. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, you know, went in it and, and I'm, I'm still here now, very happy that I made that decision. Um, realized very soon that it was exactly what I, I, I needed to be doing and where I wanted to be. Um, so 
you know, worked in a few establishments, some fine dining spots, um, craft cocktail spots. Uh, and current day, prior to COVID, was working at Silver Lion in Washington, D.C. at the Riggs D.C. Hotel. Um, and now I'm focusing on a business that I have with Alex Jump, who's a bartender out in Denver, Colorado, mm -hmm. called Focus on Health. Uh, it's a, it's a basically health and wellness for food and beverage individuals. So we created a lot of programming. Um, timing was kind of crazy with all the Black Lives Matter and COVID stuff happening. Yeah. Um, but the information seems to be really, really helpful. So just very grateful that there are people who are, you know, are able to utilize the content that we're giving them. But and yeah, I mean. Not to cut you off, but can you, no, no. can you, uh, promote that blast that out one more time for the people watching at home so they can like go yeah. and, and and get all that information for sure so focus on health you can visit us at fohealth.org or on instagram um at fohealth um you know we we work a little bit with the health tender who you know creates some programming for us um doing um something called music and movement um so just some workouts with music and then we we just got finished doing um uh something called share the mic now where we featured food and beverage individuals mm -hmm. um uh so black females and white females and it was just a really great way to kind of amplify the voices of black women which was amazing um and yeah yeah i i realized i didn't talk about me uh with competitions but yeah i competed in a few competitions last year and <laughs> uh had a really great time but i think for me that was really the moment where i was like you know uh, bartending is fun and there are also so many opportunities that come from it so um i think that's uh i think that's really a beautiful thing awesome so um and and i i know the list is endless of the things that you've competed in but um can you talk about just some of few of the competitions that you really enjoyed um, yeah. that you highlighted because I can remember when we were sitting in the hallway in Portland. Oh and my gosh, yeah, were, that's right. Yes, great. and then you went out and absolutely destroyed it, which I mean, of course, <laughs> I mean, you're LP. Um, but can you talk about like some of those competitions? Because I think that most people don't realize some of the value in competing. Um, yeah. I, I can say I'm someone myself that hasn't competed as much as I would like to, you know, so to see someone like yourself that I've always admired your hustle and how you get down, can you just kind of like tell people some of the cool stuff about it? Yeah, so it's uh, going back to that day in Portland, which is quite funny. I remember sitting there and that was the day I, I uh, got called back for Silver Lion. And I remember mm -hmm. talking to you about it and I was like, this is kind of crazy. I can't believe that this is happening. And I at that moment, I think was really when it kind of sunk in that um, that change I was looking to to make last year was actually you know happening. Um, but I think the two competitions that really um, shaped the way that I think and transitioned my career were world class for sure. Um, when I applied, I had no idea what I was doing. I shouldn't say that. When I applied, I didn't realize that I was ready. Um, mm -hmm. And I needed that push. Uh, and, you know, the journey itself was really allowed me to kind of take a look, like kind of step outside of me and take a look and, and realize what it is that I need and that I want with uh, my career. Um, additionally, you know, what my place in this industry is or could be potentially and the influence that I can have in my community, um, you know, and I think that, you know, with competing in that competition, it really allowed a lot of people on a global level to see, you know, what I was doing, which was really amazing. Um, I've, I've created amazing friendships and, you know, and acquired amazing mentorships from that um, and a lot of opportunities, which is really nice, but the important thing I think is to ensure that I'm always giving back and providing the same opportunity to someone else. Um, the other really cool one was Hardy Cognac, um, which was amazing. And uh, it was a, it was a spirit I wasn't very familiar with at the time, but taking that experience with world class, I think I was kind of able to, that was the first competition after world class that I did. And I had a very different perspective of the way to approach it. And, it, I, I just got to kind of geek out and have fun with it. So it was really amazing. Awesome. Awesome. So you being at home um, and not being able to get out and, and really kind of be behind the bar, 
Um, have you picked up any kind of new or old hobbies? Are you like doing crazy handstands and stuff? I mean, I know that <laughs> I know that um, you've went on an amazing weight loss journey. Um, you too. Ripped, it's about you, girl. You have absolutely. <laughs> but you know, and you know, I remember us going back and forth and talking about it and kind of motivating one another, and then kind of seeing you just absolutely kill it. What are yeah. some of the things that you, you've been kind of uh, doing during um, the shutdown besides all the other amazing stuff you're doing? Yeah, I definitely picked up gardening. Um, so I have a bunch of stuff growing outside. Fingers crossed that everything makes it through the summertime. Uh, still not sure if I'm good at that or not. The, um, uh, the other thing I've been picking up is uh, just reading a lot. Um, at the beginning of quarantine, I was really intrigued by this idea of fermentation and a little intimidated by it as well because I didn't really have a great understanding of what it was. Um, so it took that opportunity to kind of um, to acquire more knowledge. Uh, I think a few other things, um, definitely, definitely took on projects around the house to rearrange and um, we got a new puppy. So spending some time with uh, the new pup has been really great. And, and then lastly, just like catching up with, you know, people I would, I uh, wouldn't typically be able to catch up with um, because we have a lot more time than we've, we had in the past, right? So. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I also, too, I want to maybe touch on um, some of the struggles and the journey that you've had coming up and, and getting to where you are now. Because, I mean, for you to be in a position that you were in, that sort of lion's calling you back and you're doing all this other amazing stuff and you're traveling the world, you clearly have, have put in the work. Um, but I, I think that most people don't see the behind the scenes and know yeah. the struggles that you've had to go through. So if you don't mind, will you talk about some of that and just being a person of color in the industry? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think I think as a black female, and I, you can probably attest to this as well, that you know it's kind of instilled in us that we, we have to work so much harder. And you know, um, so I think that work ethic really just comes from childhood and you know my parents just pushing me to be the best that I can possibly be in everything that I do um with nursing I think that I, I I was I was very good at it but I don't think I was passionate about it and I, I transitioning into food and beverage you know spending the time studying and taking advantage of things like bar five day and um you know attending the seminars when you know special guests would come into town taking advantage of those opportunities but also being passionate about my craft definitely allowed me to be successful. Um, you know, I, I think another huge part is there was a moment in my career where I also realized that if I, I consistently and constantly am not taking advantage of things that scare me, um, you know, or push, push my limits and my boundaries, I'll, I will never, you know, ultimately be where I want to be. So um, that was a huge wake up call, you know, um, applying world class, for instance, or even applying to something like Silver Lion. If I, if I never did that, then I wouldn't have the opportunities, right? Yeah. You can't, you, you can't sell yourself short in that regard. So I just think it's important to, um, to, to, you know, aspire to be the best that you can be, have goals, work towards them. And, you know, there, there's a lot of disappointment that comes along the way as well, but don't be discouraged. Um, I would be lying if I said that I got every job I applied to. That's absolutely not the case. Um, or every promotion that I applied for. Um, if anything, the denial and the fact that I, I, I wasn't allotted all of those opportunities is what, you know, inspired me to continue fighting and pushing. Um, so I think it's just really important to remember that. Um, additionally, this idea that, yes, you know, there are successes that have come my way, but that does not mean that I have not experienced oppressions and like difficulties along the way. They're still very much present and there, um, unfortunately. But I, I do, again, think that they've allowed me to be a little stronger. So there is a, a lot of good that comes out of it. I, I would have to say, yeah, because I can remember before I met you, I had heard about you, you know, and then, you know, it's one of those things that you don't know if like what they say actually matches up. And then when I met you, it didn't even come close. I was like, yo, mm -hmm. she's like super dope. Like where has she been my whole life? Aww. So 
you know, it's been really good to get to know you and also get to know you as a friend and, and just see how you've just really just been someone that I think anyone in the industry can look to as, in a lot of ways, a role model, in a lot of ways, someone to um, strive to be like in a lot of ways, because with all the hard work, with all the stuff that you've put in, and now to not be someone that necessarily is always out there on their soapbox, you know, you let your work kind of speak for itself. And that's something that I've always appreciated about you. But I do have two more questions for you. Uh, they are the oh. infamous wrap up questions on uh, Home Bars <laughs> Live. Um, and one is, I'm gonna give them to you both at the same time. One is, okay. what superpower would you like to have? And oh, two, um, what would be, if you could have any kind of a dream bar, what would be the name of your bar? And I'm gonna throw you a curveball. What would be your top drink? And then what would be, what kind of food would you serve? Oh my goodness. Okay, so superpower, to be two places at once. So I could be the ideal employee. <laughs> 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 I could be at service bar and taking care of my guests at the same time. So yeah, that would be amazing, right? Um, so if I could have any bar, so I'm very much a New Yorker, born and raised there. I have so much New York pride. And I've always wanted to learn how to butcher, um, make my own like charcuterie and have a sandwich shop. So I would mm. do that with like a speakeasy, like New York style speakeasy in the back. Um, and I don't know what it would be called. There's no place like New York. I have no idea. <laughs> 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 but awesome. yeah so yeah I think that for me I want to take something like sandwiches and show people that they can be um amazing and delicious and decadent and you don't have to spend a lot of money for them right um and they they're still a food item that you can uh specifically create a certain way to pair with drinks right uh mm -hmm. we can make craft sandwiches and craft drinks so um, yeah I think that if I could open a spot it'd be like that awesome well um, when you do open up, uh, you know, I definitely will be there to come and get my sandwich and my drink on. Um, but uh, again, I wanted to say thank you so much. I really appreciate you spending the time with me. I know you have a ton of things going on. This this has been a couple of weeks in, in the making, and I really appreciate you. For, you know, for one, getting back to me, reaching out to me, because, you know, that, that means a lot, especially in this climate with everything we have going on. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for being who you are. And thank you for being my friend. Thanks for uh, having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, you're Lauren. I mean, who doesn't want to have you on camera? Oh, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> so this, uh, so I'm going to say, I will see you later, my friend, and we're actually going to yeah. bring you back in a little bit later, and we're going to continue Sounds the conversation good. later. But Excellent. without further ado, I'm going to say goodbye to you, Lauren, and I'm going to be welcoming in another good friend of mine. Um, if you don't know this man, you will know him very soon. Makes great juice. I mean, some of the best whiskeys in the world, and we also got some gin on the shelves that if you haven't had it yet, you need to try it. Not only that, he has an amazing history and is all around a pretty good dude. That is none other than Paul Hletko. Paul, how you doing, man? Hey, Mo, how's it going, man? I, I'm, I'm really hungry. I want one of LP's sandwiches. Can I, uh, <laughs> can I get that delivered, LP? <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I, I'm like, yo, can we get some of those, like, ASAP? Seriously, like, come on, I feel a little left out. <laughs> So first and foremost, Paul, I want to say thanks for coming on, uh, as well with as Lauren. You, you also a guest that I've been wanting to have on for a while, and it's been it's great to kind of actually have both of you on um, on this very special episode because this is the first time I've actually had a distiller on as well as well as a bartender. So I I hope that people at home are kind of getting that that special treat that I was talking about of having different perspectives. But no, it's it's glad to be here, man. It's it's good fun. Like I loved uh, I love seeing Lauren's bar, man. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so this is Home Bars Live, and I'm Ooh. going to assume that you probably have a home bar set up, if you don't mind showing us. Yeah, it turns out that I do, Hammy. Where'd my, where'd my camera flipper go? There we go. So here we go. Uh, I've got a little bit of a collection here. So that's 
that's a, some of it. We got some more over here. We got some more over here. We got some more over there. <laughs> stuff that's still in the box. Um, we've got a lot of stuff. And so it's just kind of, uh, yeah, I mean, as a distiller, obviously we get loaded up with uh, stuff that we did. And then I've got an awful lot of friends around the distilling industry. So you know, I kind of collect signed bottles as kind of trophies from them too. So yeah, I, I, there's, there, there's a lot here, but a lot of it is kind of trophies. Um, mm -hmm. Ranging from on top is pretty much all brands that I either started or are part of my family with uh, Samson and Surrey. Uh, I've got some kind of cool autograph stuff ranging from uh, uh, Lars Ulrich from Metallica, All the Flaming Lips, Alice in Chains, uh, the drummer from Crocus, who's one of my favorite heavy metal bands in the 80s. Uh, don't make fun, although you can if you want to. Uh, Sarah Shook and the Disarmers. We worked with them on a release and got an autographed bottle from them. I got Rob Miller from uh, Bloodshot Records autographed a bottle. Um, and then you've got a lot of the other Samson Sur portfolio with Bren and Blue Coat and Ocho and Bago. Uh, more and more and more. And, you know, some kind of limited edition releases we've done with Few and some more stuff. Uh, we got the whole team to sign the uh, last bottle of uh, the previous bottle, uh, the previous glass bottle we used. So everybody signed uh, the last bottle that came off the line. And then all sorts of other really cool, fun stuff that I've gotten from friends along the way. Um, a lot of it's autographed by them and so on. Uh, so, you know, like Colin Keegan uh, from Santa Fe Spirits. I got his signature there. I got my friends from uh, Kiro in Finland. They signed over there and you know, cool stuff. We got the funk in the back over there. Uh, one of the first bottles of St. George's Baller. I don't know wow. if you've ever seen that, uh, but uh, that stuff is killer stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have you had Baller Mo? Oh yeah, that that is that's insane. Especially with that being one of the first bottles, that's that's really cool. Yeah, I mean Baller, it's one of those whiskeys where that, that's what it is, man. It's Baller. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel silly saying it, but mm, the name truth fits. is truth, you know. Yeah, very much so. Um, but uh, you know, some, there's some kind of fun stuff going on all over the place. Wow. It, it looks, I mean, and, and, you know, and, and working and being in the company for, you know, the past year or so, just looking at all the different few bottles that I, I've never seen before, something that's oh, yeah. really we got cool. Old, we got a whole bunch over here, too. Uh, you probably haven't seen this one. No. That, that, that label is just so cool. Wow. Uh Copper and Kings, you know, did some bu bunch of work with them because we're pretty good friends with them. Another Copper and Kings. Uh, I don't even know what else we got back here. Some Italy stuff. Uh, this is a really cool label. This is a Copper and Kings product, not few, but uh, we're still representing, of course. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, oh, and we got all these stuff in here too. <laughs> There's always more liquor. I'm coming over. Yeah, come on over, man. LP, where you at? Bring me a sandwich. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, some fun stuff. Cool, cool. Well, I mean, it's it's definitely clear from the collection that uh, if, if there was an apocalypse to happen, uh, I think you'd be okay for a while. Yeah, I. we don't really struggle for alcohol around here. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of my home bar. I mean, it's like I said, it's a lot of trophies. Uh, but uh, there's, I definitely put a damage on some last night. Though. That's for damn sure. Nice. This uh, that bottle of Parse was a lot more full last night. I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> so now that you showed us me. your, so so now that you showed us your home bar, Paul, um, why don't you uh, let's 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 take a little a little chat and get to know you even more. Hey, what's your thing? So, um, first and foremost, um, why don't you give the, let the people know who you are uh, and a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, Paul, I live in uh, Evanston, Illinois, which is where the you know, Few Spirits Distillery is. Uh, I'm old, I'm fat, I'm hairy, I've got a goofy looking beard. Uh, but COVID is, uh, it's the COVID beard, I guess. I got the COVID hair that's, you know, I haven't been gotten cut in 
uh, well, it's been a while. I needed a haircut when it all started and, you know, needing a haircut doesn't really go away until you get it done. So we'll see when that happens. Um, but yeah, start, I started a few spirits uh, almost nine years ago or almost nine years on the market. Uh, started it you know, a couple of years before that, of course, but uh, you know, been out, out selling for about nine years, currently covered across 50 states, 36 countries on five continents. Uh, number two selling craft rye in the U.S. Uh, number, I'm sorry, number one selling craft rye, number two selling craft bourbon for folks that make their own. Uh, and continue to grow with uh, the help of a fantastic team at Samson and Surrey. Well, uh, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, this is this is this is one of my favorite episodes of Home Bars Live. Uh, literally, we get two of my favorite people, and also two. Uh, you also have a music background, don't you, Paul? Yeah, I used to be a pro guitar player. Probably got a little snap of a, uh, you know. There's one of my guitars and a mandolin that's currently got a broken string, but uh, uh, at some point I'll be able to buy another string for it. So during COVID, have you picked up the guitar more? Are you playing more? Yeah, I've been, uh, I hadn't played with you know, other people. I hadn't played music with other people in probably 12 years, uh, but with the onset of COVID and you know, as Illinois has kind of opened up a little bit, you know, I wouldn't say we're wide open yet, but we're opening might be the way I put it. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I've gotten together with a few people a couple times will last like three, four weeks and we just get together. We make some noise. Um, you know, I've got, uh, you know, I've got some substantially sized barrel warehouses so we can all get in there and we can all stand, uh, I mean, realistically we can stand 30, 40 feet apart. Um, and, uh, we just have some fun and make some noise and get, get a little goofy, have a couple drinks, uh, cab home, of course. And, uh, it's been really fun and really emotionally powerful because I'm really getting to do something that I really care about. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just means a lot to kind of get that little bit of, I don't know, normalcy uh, that I haven't really had since I started few because you know, if you have been working, you know, in a short week, I'll work 90, 95 hours and a long week I'll do, you know, 110, 120. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it doesn't leave a whole lot of time for playing music. So with COVID, can't travel, can't do a whole lot. Uh, it's been really nice to get have a little extra free time to spend with some music. Uh, I've gotten to spend a lot more time with my wife, gotten to spend a lot more time with my kids, which has been just absolutely magical. Um, you know, family is, you know, it's really the only thing that matters. You know, you know this is all fun and great, but, uh, you know, family is what counts. Yeah. And so getting the chance to, spend some time and just kind of hang out and get silly with the kids has been fantastic because you know they're leaving the house pretty soon um you know yesterday they were babies but now my oldest is 17 so uh you know <laughs> they're not gonna be around the house too much longer yeah just sad <laughs> awesome so um we're so for people that don't know were you a bartender like, how did you get started in this whole spirits thing? Like, were you like slinging drinks in college, and then like you were like the Tom Cruise of Evanston? Like, what what, what was your what was your deal? No, I mean, everybody thinks I can bartend, and uh, it's really funny. Like every now and then, people say, "Oh, you should come do a guest bartending shift." I'm like, eh, don't really think you want that. And then they'll say, "Yeah, yeah, you come in and come do it." And then they'll sit and watch me work behind the bar, and they're like, "You know, why don't I just go ahead and take over <laughs> for you?" Um, I'm a terrible bartender. I, you know, I, I've got bad chats. I don't have any hospitality skills. I can't make a good drink. You know, every aspect of what makes a good bartender, I totally lack. Um, I did work as a bar back for a while, uh, which you know, I guess that's not quite exactly the same, but you know, I did work in bars here and there, but never as a bartender. Uh, so I kind of came into alcohol, you know, kind of a little bit of a roundabout way. Uh, it just seemed like a good idea. I've also got some kind of family history with uh, alcohol that you know, few helps me to kind of reconnect and rebuild on. Because uh, prior to World War II, my grandfather's family owned what is now a major brewery in the Czech Republic. Uh, you know, Nazis invaded, uh, confiscated the brewery, and murdered the whole family in the camps. Uh, Grandpa survived. You know, I wouldn't be here. And uh, 
but never got the brewery back after trying for all his life. And when he died, it kind of struck me that that whole family legacy and history uh, is gone forever if I don't do something about it. So a few is kind of trying to do something about it where we could take this family legacy and build on it, do something new, something different. I uh, try to be positive and creative rather than just raising a fist to the sky and saying, why me? Uh, you know, we're, we're, I'm just kind of doing my thing and trying to pay a little bit of homage to the past. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I can say in knowing you, you've definitely been one of the most positive people I met. I can remember when we met in San Jose and we were working uh, that event together and, you know, the nervousness of me coming in, just, you know, wanting to hopefully get the opportunity and then working next to you, the man that was actually creating the juice that I'm talking about. And you made me feel so at ease and you've always been um, an extremely positive person, um, which I want to thank you for. But yeah, that was a fun night, man. We had a good time. That we did. And you picked um, that shit up. You picked that up real quick. You go, like, oh, boom, boom, boom. And all of a sudden you're like, I got it. I got it. Boom, boom, boom. All right, wait, no, I don't know that one, Paul. What's this? Yeah, boom. All right, got it. Boom, boom, boom. Well, you know, it's it's one of those things that, uh, and being a bartender for so long, and also having a background in nursing and everything that I've done, you know, it's you, you got to learn on your feet and learn quick, and and hopefully you can make it a part of who you are and your stick. Um, but one thing I wanted to touch on was you've done a lot of collaborations with a lot of really cool bands. Is there one in particular that? you really enjoyed and is the one that you've always dreamed of collaborating with that you just haven't had a chance to make happen yet yeah there's definitely a great white whale out there for me that i continue to hunt and i do want to uh, i definitely want to collaborate with them hasn't happened yet not currently in the works although i'm continuing to work on it uh we're working right now trying to develop another band uh collab which i'm excited about great band um very exciting. Theoretically, that'll come out next spring-ish, uh, but we'll see. You know, we, no deal yet, so I'm not talking too much. But uh, working with both the Flaming Lips and Allison Chains was really fantastic. I'm a big fan of both bands. Love the music. I have for a lot of years. Probably will for a lot more, at least hopefully. Uh, and it's just really fun to be able to work with people like that. Uh, you know, as a former pro guitar player, that's a little bit of a that creative approach to improvisation and music and creating that sort of art on the fly is you know so a little bit of the approach that we try to take with few. Uh, you know, we're always trying to make you know, push the edge and we're not afraid to fail and you know we're not afraid to try a recipe and have it not be good. Um, you know we're always kind of putting ourselves out there and trying to push the envelope on what what we can do and what kind of art we can make and we're challenging ourselves every day to push just a little bit further and try to explore just another little nook and cranny and say okay what could we do if you cut over here what do we what happens if you go over there and then yeah you know you trip and fall sometimes and uh you just get back up and try it again and i, I think it's fantastic it's it's that art and the creation that really drives me you know, just like with so many bartenders, you know, creating new drinks and having that creative experience behind the bar where you're putting, you know, you're putting a, almost a performance art in a lot of ways where you're really kind of creating a new experience on the fly. Um, it's, you know, it's kind of peas in the pod, you know, we're, you know, we try to create art, you know, in a bottle in the same way the bartenders try to create art in the real world. And it's, you know, it's exciting being part of this business because, great people and it's an awful lot of fun yeah yeah i will agree so um we're at that point to where i have the two infamous wrap-up questions for you and oh. one is uh you might have you might have heard them earlier when i was talking to lauren one is what superpower would you like to have and the second one i'm going to switch it up for you um what if you could have a band and create your own band who would be the members in your band and what will be the name Ooh. of it? All right, so I guess superpower, um, run real fast, I guess. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it seems kind of you can go places and get there quickly. Uh, I don't want to fly because I'm terrified of heights. Um, my, uh, my wife and kids play a game about uh, what would happen if you had a particular superpower, but then you had a terrible weakness that decimated it's like you, you you can fly but you're you're terrified of heights and it makes you vomit 
Um, you know, so it's a fun little superpower game too. If you ever, if you've never played that, it's really fun. Um, and if I could be in a band, you know, who would be in it? Uh, well, that's going to be a pretty easy one. Jerry Garcia, Bobby Weir, Phil Lesh, uh, Mickey Hart, Billy Kreutzman. Uh, and uh, I'd love to have uh, Brent as well as Keith, as well as Pigpen all playing uh, keys with us. And obviously Pig on uh, harmonica. Awesome. 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 So what's the name? What would be the name of the band? That's the one thing we left out. <laughs> Well, it'd be the Grateful Pauls, of course. It couldn't be the Grateful Dead if you got me in it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Paul, I want to say thank you for joining us. And, and thank you for letting us into your home and, and just giving us an inside look on, on kind of how, on how you roll on days when you're just hanging at the house. Yeah, thanks. Well, thanks for having me on, man. It's good to see you. And uh, have a great day to you and everybody out there, man. Definitely. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to bring Lauren back in um, and, and then we'll have our, our, our quick little our, our powwow and wrap-up chat. So um, first and foremost, Paul, I'll start with you. Is there anything that you want to say to the people out there? Hey, everybody. I hope you like what you see. And if you do, feel free to uh, uh, check it out and uh, check out some few spirits. Awesome. We actually have someone is, 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 I think they're dialing in on one of our social media channels to see if we have a question coming in. But in the meantime, Lauren, do you have anything you'd love to say to the people out there? I have a question for Paul. Do you have a oh. room for a ukulele player in your band? <laughs> Absolutely, man. Come, come play. Uke is a great I instrument. I just can't do it so good, but uh, it's, the sound is awesome. Yeah, I uh, actually, that's a skill I forgot to mention. I picked it up during quarantine. It's fun. awesome. My, uh, my youngest daughter's been playing a little bit, and like, she tries to hide it from me, which is, I don't understand why she tries to hide it, because it makes me just, it fills my, it, well, actually, I do know why, because it brings me joy, so therefore she can't. Um, yeah. I was never a teenage girl, but I have two of them, and my impression is, is that you can't do anything that would give your parents happiness when you're a teenage girl. Um, I don't know if you had that experience, <laughs> uh, but yeah, but she, you know, she just plays a uke, and she sings, and she has this beautiful voice, and it just, you know, it just fills me with pride and love, and you know, I wish she didn't hide it, but she does. I love that. That's amazing. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Well, I want to thank both of you for coming on and joining us. I would like to think that everyone that's been sitting at home has thoroughly enjoyed themselves as much as I have. Um, I would probably bring both of you guys back for another week just to talk to you some more. But uh, we are going to be saying a dupe, and this has been one of my favorite episodes of Home Bars Live. So for Home Bars Live, I'm Mo Brooks, Paul Kletko, that is Lauren Paler. We're saying bye. Thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you same time, same channel, same place next week, right here. Also, go follow Samson Surrey TV. Get on Instagram. Go to Lauren. Drop that plug one more time. Uh, so it's FO Health on Instagram and then LP Drinks DC on Instagram. And if you don't follow Few Spirits, you don't follow Paul, please go and do so. Paul, are you still doing the uh, the nighttime reads? Yeah, not uh, not every day anymore, but I'm still doing some. Uh, I read kids' books on uh, on Instagram. Like I think yeah, this is the last one I read. Aww. Super fun book, but it's so big. Uh, night night with Paul. Check it out, Paul. It's <laughs> at Paul M. Holetko on the Instagrams. And night night with Paul's fun. It's a little silly. It. And it's calming and relaxing. And there you have it. And this is why I brought both of them on. Two amazing people. Now you can go and follow them and stalk them through their social feeds and actually learn even more about them. Hopefully. Um, but again, thank you everyone for watching at home. This is Home Bars Live. I'm Mo Brooks, and we are signing out. See y'all later.